the people that we follow on social media, they are influencing us. That's why they are called influencers. Like when we follow people, we are following them. I think we've lost the weight of the word follow because of followers on Instagram and followers on TikTok and followers on this, that, and the other. And there's probably going to be another app tomorrow that we have to follow somebody else. And I'm just, I'm kind of tired of it. I'm entering, I'm entering in my old man era, guys. I'm tired of this crap. I'm too old for this, grandpa. You know, I'm just saying. We've lost the weight of the word follow. Michael's just shaking his head right now. He's like, gosh, dang it. Why? I thought I was out of junior high. Here I am with this junior high guy making lame jokes. I'm sorry, man. It's just who I am. It's what you get. I love you guys. It's good. I'm glad to be here. I don't know. I, I, got, I got no reason. It's just, it's there. Just keep on going. But this is seriously, guys. When we, when we are choosing to follow after somebody, we are following the direction they go. We are following what they believe. We are following what they do in this life. And not only following after somebody, this is what I want to talk to you about tonight. When we attach ourselves to things, they too can determine the course that we take, the direction that we go. All right, so I'm going to start over here in Matthew 11 chapter, oh, sorry, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Very familiar passage. I talk to you guys about it all the time because it is literally one of my favorites, even though I just said I had another favorite. But anyway, all right. It says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, for those of you in the room that has heard me say this before, I apologize. You're going to hear it again. But for those of you who have not heard it before, a yoke is simply a situation, a piece of equipment that goes across the backs of working animals. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this time. He's referring to the yoke of a working animal that plows the field and works the land. And what he's saying is, if you choose to come to me, if you choose to follow after, after me, I have a yoke that is for you to be attached to me so that way I can lead you in this life. It is when you are led by Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, that you will actually have rest for your souls. I want to be attached to the one that gives me the good rest and the great rest. I want someone that's going to lead me where exactly I need to go. I don't want to be figuring it out all by myself. And what's great about these yokes, and I've talked about this before as well, but these yokes were custom made to the animal that it was for. The yoke that's meant for a donkey is going to be a little bit different than the yoke that's meant for the cow. The yoke that's meant for Michael is going to be a lot different than the yoke that's meant for Miller. Miller needs a very interesting yoke. He's got a whole different kinds of interesting, a whole different kind of situation, but it's custom made for him. He said, this is all crooked. <laughs> oh man, the family members got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to understand that this yoke was made for us. It was designed for us, but we have to decide, are we going to put on the yoke? Are we going to attach ourselves to it and let him lead us where we want to go? I do have a slight illustration for you guys just to further illustrate what it's like and what it looks like to be led by somebody or something. And so if I could get a volunteer, Lisi would like to volunteer. <laughs> you want to do it? All right. Come on over here, buddy. All right. If I could get another volunteer. An it doesn't matter. It doesn't size doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anybody want DJ, you want to do this? You want to do this? Come, come on up here, buddy. Come on. Come on. All right. So this is a dog leash. I have dogs. Do what? Yeah, it clips into the car. I know, I was so excited. I was like, I can actually take my dogs and they'd be safe in my car, not just rolling around like an animal. Um, but this is a dog leash. And for those of you that don't have dogs, you walk dogs sometimes, so you need a leash. I don't, I don't know how else to explain this to you. It's a leash and you have it. But the idea of a leash, obviously, is to keep the dog with its owner and then obviously to lead them where they want to go. And so what I saw in my heart, hello there, we're just, is gonna, can you hold this microphone? 
right. And, you know. Hey. <laughs> hope that, wow, you, you had a, you're a little bit, I don't mean this in the wrong way. You're a little, <laughs> you're a, you're a little bigger than I thought you were going to be. I mean that in the best of ways. Yeah, me too, buddy. <laughs> All right. So Caden has this leash, this yoke upon his life. Now, he can choose to attach himself to whatever it is that he wants to, whether that be Jesus, whether that be relationships, whether that be substances, whether that be education, career, But whatever it looks like, if DJ were to go somewhere right now, Caden has to come with him. Caden could try to fight it, but I'd be willing to bet that DJ has no problem moving 140 pounds. (laughs) So wherever DJ goes, Caden's going to fall. Why don't you guys go take a lap? Go walk around a little bit. (laughs) So wherever he goes, Caden's going. And, and there's really nothing Caden can do. He has to go with him. Like, he is attached. It's happening. Wherever DJ wants to go, Caden has to go. If DJ wants to go to a party, Caden's going to the party. <laughs> Are you introduce him to your friends right now? Like, what's happening right now? Caden's <laughs> making new friends because that's where DJ wants to go. So at some point in his life, if Caden... Caden's not necessarily happy with the direction that he's going in this life. He has to decide, do I want to be attached to this thing anymore? Do I want to be attached to DJ who's going to lead me to some randos in the back of the room and tell me their names? And if he doesn't want to be attached to them anymore, he has to decide to break himself away from this, to unlatch the leash so he can be free to be attached to what he should be attached to. You can go ahead. <laughs> He's still holding the leash. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I thank you so much. It was just a silly illustration, but I hope you guys understand what it is that we attach ourselves to, the good things and the bad things. They're going to determine the course of our life. Caden didn't really have much say once he was attached to DJ. Now, he could decide to be disattached or unattached. What's the unattached? Dis- detached. That's the word. English is hard. Um, But you can detach from these things. You don't have to stay attached. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is we have to allow the Lord to be the leader of our life. And if there's things that we are attached to, we have to make the mature decision and say, hey, I don't need to be attached to that anymore. I don't want that to be the leader of my life anymore. I want Jesus to be the leader of my life because this is what happens when you allow him to be the leader of your life. Again, like it talked about in Matthew, it says, take my yoke upon you. You'll learn from me. So you'll learn how to live this life for you'll learn that he's gentle and humble and you'll find rest for your souls. I want rest. I want peace in my heart. And over here in Psalms 34, 8, it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. How blessed fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man that takes refuge in him. Now, the word refuge, the definition of that basically just means a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. And another synonym would be a haven, a safe haven, a shelter, a sanctuary, an oasis, a retreat, an asylum. The asylum one, that sounds a little sketchy, but you know, yeah. But the oasis, guys, that's what we need. We need the sanctuary. I think about that word sanctuary. I think of like a wildlife preserve that's been sequestered off from the rest of the world. And there's all this wildlife that's happening in there. And no one's allowed to get in there and do hunting. No one's allowed to go in there and poach. This wildlife preserve is supposed to be protected so the nature and the people, not people, the things in that area are able to be fruitful and do what they're supposed to do. We need to understand that Jesus wants to be our safe haven. He wants to be our shelter. He wants to be our wildlife preserve, if you will. He wants to provide for you. We have to understand that we need to take refuge in him. We must connect with him. We must attempt to do this and taste and see that this is true, that he says this about himself. We attach ourselves to him. We find refuge, we find peace, we find hope, and we find direction. But again, 
it's not just about attaching to Jesus because I understand, you know, you guys come in week in, week out, and you're like, all right, dude, we get it. Like, Jesus is great. Jesus is awesome. I understand, but you say that every week. I, yeah, whatever. But over here in Hebrews 12, 1, this is the thing. I want you to be successful in your walk with God. Say, I want to be successful. You are successful when you follow after what God has for you. That is what true success is. It's not the career. It's not the boy. It's not the girl. It's not the sports team. It's not the cool car. It's not the the latest and greatest computer. It's not the best phone. It's following after God. And like we've talked about many a time in Matthew 6, like if you follow after him, the desires of your heart, the things that you want for your life, those things can come to pass. If God wants it for your life, if God allows it, he'll bring it to your path. But we have to follow after him first, amen? Hebrews 12, talking about being attached, letting him be the leader of your life. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. I want you guys to run. It's pretty hard to run when you're attached to a weight. And that's why we got to strip off some weights. We got to run with endurance. We can't attach ourselves to things that might be slowing us down. Now, again, I'm not talking, okay, so maybe you guys are like curious, like, well, what is a weight? Anything that's keeping you from allowing God to be the leader of your life, that is a weight. Anything that keeps you from entering into the presence of God, anything that keeps you from reading your Bible, anything that keeps you from praying to him, that's a weight. Anything that keeps you for stepping out and loving people when they're being a butthole. Yeah, I said it. (gasps) B-hole. That's a weight. We got to cast it off so we can run with endurance. Yeah, sin, obviously. Yeah, sure. We understand that that sin leads to death. And so when we have it, when we attach ourselves to sin, that's a, that's a, a really bad thing to attach ourselves to because that's a slippery slope that Made for a season, sin's going to be great and fun and wonderful and it feels good and it looks good, but eventually it's going to lead you into darkness. Now, wait, again, it might not necessarily be bad. Maybe you do like to watch Netflix on, 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 a, on a late night, or maybe you like to scroll the TikTok feeds for like eight hours, or maybe you like to, you know, maybe eight hours is enough. Maybe that's a wait right there. Maybe you like to scroll the TikTok feed for a couple minutes at a time. I don't know. But Maybe you desire a relationship. Maybe you want a boyfriend. Maybe you want a girlfriend. Maybe you want the good job. Maybe you want to play sports. Maybe you want the cool car. But when we obsess over those things, we make those things the point of our life, that is a weight because it keeps you from running your race for God because you're running your race for you. We got to run our race for him and he takes care of you. Again, Psalms 23 talks about he is our shepherd. He leads us by still waters. He leads us into green pastures. I will have sustenance when I allow him to be the leader of my life. So we must understand the things that we attach ourselves to, the sins and the weights, we got to get rid of those. Maybe we don't smoke weed today. Maybe we don't slide into their DMs today. Maybe we don't listen to music when the minister's up here talking. Those are the things that we have to be honest with ourselves. We've got to be mature about. And there's no shade or condemnation. We've all been there. We've all done it. We've all been a little bit less serious about the things of God. We've all been a little bit given into the ways of this world or sin. Heck, I love to binge watch shows. Outer Banks, I watched that in like a day. I'm just saying, like, I I started it and I finished it. You know what I mean? There's not four seasons, girl. There's three. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's been, that's okay. All right. All right. But anyway, all right. On the set, the thing that just came out with the Nickelodeon documentary, I watched that in, like, two nights. Like, it was so crazy and it's awful and sad, but I, I understand, I get it. There's things and there's times that I don't want to pray. There's times when I don't want to read my Bible. There's times where I don't want to go to church. <gasps> oh. ah! I'm on fire! <laughs> ah! Guys, we all have ways. 
We all sometimes give in to our flesh. We all sometimes let other things lead what we do. But that's when we got to be honest with ourselves. Like we, we have to say, this, not the best thing for me right now. And again, maybe I'm not saying that you have to get rid of it all together. I'm not saying you can't allow these things in your life. Like you can still watch shows. You can still be on the, the TikTok feed. You can still want the nice car. You can still desire the relationship, but we can't allow it to direct the path that we take. We can't allow it to be our decision maker. We have to decide that we decide to be with God and he'll bring the things that we need across our path. Amen. Over here, Romans 8, 14 says, for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. Now, I know a lot of you don't wanna hear this, but your parents, for the most part, in a broad general sense, they want the best for you. They do, a good parent. And I understand not everyone in this room has been blessed with great parents, or maybe you aren't even with your parents, but maybe I, I believe that you have a guardian in your life, or maybe it's a spiritual mother or a spiritual father. They want good things for you. The child doesn't know. Again, you're kind of dumb. And I mean that in the best way possible, because I'm kind of dumb too. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Please don't throw stones. <laughs> but we need the guidance of our parent. We need the guidance of our father. And when we are led by him, we are saying, God, you know more than me. Isaiah 55 talks about his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways because he's bigger than us. He's greater than us. He's older than us. He knows everything. Why wouldn't I wanna be led by the one that created the earth that I walk in today? Why wouldn't I want to walk after the one that made the purpose for my life? I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this, which brings me to the next scripture, 1 Peter 5, 6, NLT. I've been reading out NLT like the whole time, by the way. Uh, there you go, Nick. Uh, it says, Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Now I have read this scripture a million times, maybe not a million, a lot of times, a butt ton of times. But I never really realized this until a couple of weeks ago, but it says, so humble yourselves. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Meaning we have to be mature enough to not only know that God is smarter than us, to not only know that God is greater than us, but we have to be mature enough to humble ourselves, to relinquish control over our own life, to relinquish the lead or the leash of our own life and put it in the hands of our father and allow him to direct our path. When we allow him to be the leader, we are giving him our cares. We are entrusting him with our worries. We are entrusting him with our life. We're saying, God, I'm coming under you and I'm following what after that is that you want me to do. We have to make this decision on our own. Just like the things that we choose to attach ourselves to now, we make those choices. The things that we do late at night, we make that choice. God always gave us a choice, which is wonderful and awful all at the same time. Because if he really wanted to, he could have just made us robots and everybody would have been hunky-dory all the time. But he gave us the choice because he didn't want robots. He wanted humans made in his likeness and image. He wanted a family that wanted to be with him, that wanted to follow after him, that wanted what he has for them. So my question for you all tonight that I, you don't need to answer it right now, but as you are in this space, in this moment with God, as we are talking about letting things be the leader of our life, are you mature enough to recognize that maybe there's some things that you've attached yourself to that are dictating 
the direction you're walking right now. The path that you're on, is it being determined by what your friends are doing? Which, you know, the book of Corinthians talks about how bad company can corrupt good morals. So maybe those are not the friends for you. And maybe not forever, but at least right now until you're strong enough to not let them corrupt the good morals. Are you allowing Jesus to be the leader of your life? Are you allowing his goodness to be the leader of your life so that way when something happens, you respond in kindness, you respond with patience, or are you letting the flesh be the leader of your life? So I hope and pray that you're asking yourself these questions now, Lord, what am I allowing myself to be attached to? What am I following after that's determining the course of my life? And I pray that as we conclude service here in just a couple of moments, that you make some very bold decisions to detach from some things that are taking you off course and attach yourself once again to the yoke that Jesus has for your life so you can experience the true rest he has for you. Amen. I want to pray for you real fast if you'll bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you for every single person in the room tonight. Lord, I thank you for being the great shepherd of our life. The great shepherd that wants to lead us by still waters, that leads us into green pastures, the one that gives us everything that we could ever ask or think according to your word, Lord. I just thank you for every single person in this room tonight. Lord, I pray that you give them a boldness to analyze their life, to look at all the things that they've given themselves over to. And I pray that you give them courage to make some decisions, either to continue in what you already have for them. Maybe they're attached to you now, but I do believe, Lord, that maybe they've recognized there's some other things that we can shore up on. Or maybe there's some people in the room that I they have no attachment to you whatsoever, Lord. And I pray that you show them right now the benefits of walking with you are far greater than walking without you. And Lord, I just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that when they make these decisions, you immediately bring them the peace that only you can give. It might be difficult, it might be hard, but I pray that you give them confirmation when they make that choice to follow after you and you alone. 